The Battle of Kosair was fought during the Kosovo War between the Father Yugoslav forces and the Kosovo Liberation Army, the latter supported by the NATO Air Forces and Albanian Army. The battle was fought around Kosair on the border between FR Yugoslavia and Albania from 9 April until 10 June during the NATO bombing of FR Yugoslavia. The KLA sought to enter Kosovo from Albania and cut off of the communication routes of the Yugoslav army. KLA insurgents managed to take the Kosair outpost and a number of surrounding border areas following a massive artillery barrage by the Albanian army and NATO airstrikes of Yugoslav strategic sites, but after days of fighting they were unable to break through the Yugoslav army's second line of defense. Chapter 1 – Background According to U.S. intelligence and military officials, NATO provided air support to the KLA, while NATO and the Clinton administration denied providing direct support to the KLA, with one Western official expressing concern of a KLA military dictatorship being established in Kosovo. The KLA was also supported by artillery from the Albanian army. Chapter 2 – Timeline Chapter 2 – Section 1, 9-13 April KLA Offensive. On the 9th of April 1999, at 3 o'clock, an artillery barrage began from the Albanian side of the border, aimed in the direction of the Kosair military outpost, which was occupied by the Yugoslav army, in what became one of the bloodiest battles of the Kosovo War. The Albanians attacked in three directions, the first was towards Rasa e Kosher's, the second was towards the well-defended Kosair outpost and the third was towards Maharglava. Approximately 136 KLA soldiers reached the border and attacked Yugoslav positions. At that time less than 200 members of the Yugoslav army were stationed at the front line. Bloody fighting ensued and lasted the whole day with four dead and one wounded on the Albanian side and 23 dead on the Yugoslav side. Later, the KLA seized the peak of Rasa e Kosher's and immediately began entrenching themselves. Serbian reports claimed that the KLA insurgents were assisted by British, French, German and Italian special forces. The battle continued until the next morning. Then, with artillery support, the KLA took Maharglava and continued to bombard the Kosair outpost, which resulted in the Yugoslav soldiers having to abandon their posts. At 1900 hours, members of the KLA entered the abandoned outpost and CNN and the British BBC broadcast images of a great number of KLA militants taking the outpost. Members of the Yugoslav forces then retreated towards the second line of defense above the outpost. Those positions were easier to defend. The next day, Yugoslav reserve troops arrived to relieve the First Army. One batch of KLA soldiers managed to cut the Yugoslav line of communications, and managed to disable one Bove armored personnel carrier. During the night, the KLA attacked the Yugoslav army at Apijaz, trying to shatter the resistance of the Yugoslav soldiers, but all of the attacks were unsuccessful and resulted in the Yugoslav army inflicting heavy losses on the KLA insurgents. The next day, the KLA tried to break the resistance of the second defensive line of the Yugoslav army, with little success. Meanwhile, the Yugoslavs managed to bring in their special forces and also a few artillery pieces. On the 13th of April, the Yugoslav and Albanian armies clashed at the border near Kruma. Chapter 2 Section 2 The 14th of April, Yugoslav Counteroffensive on Maharglava Albanian army and KLA artillery continued to shell the Yugoslav army's positions from Maharglava and Rasa e Kosher's. The Yugoslav army headquarters decided to launch a sudden attack and surprise the enemy. On April 14, Yugoslav troops attacked Maharglava. The distance between the two enemy trenches wasn't longer than 50 meters. The Yugoslav army was unable to take Maharglava completely, but it prevented the Albanians' artillery from engaging them from their positions. The Maharglava front was stabilized until the end of the war, without any changes on the lines. In April, there weren't any changes on the front lines at Rasa e Kosher's, and both sides suffered heavy losses. 
Many Yugoslav soldiers were killed by the non-stop artillery bombardment, while many KLA soldiers were killed in numerous unsuccessful attempts to break the Yugoslav lines of defense. Chapter 2 Section 3, 10-11 May, Yugoslav Offensive on Rasa Eco Shares May began with several unsuccessful attacks by the Yugoslav army to take back the Kosair outpost. The attacks were made unsuccessful because of the constant artillery fire aimed at their positions. On 6 May, the Yugoslav army counterattacked at Rasa Eco Shares, in an effort to halt the artillery bombardment. A bloody skirmish ensued, but the Yugoslav army did not manage to take Rasa Eco Shares. On 10 May, the Yugoslav army sent two T-55 tanks to help stabilize the offensive on Rasa Eco Shares. When the tanks penetrated the KLA's lines, they advanced over 100 meters into insurgent-held territory, but the KLA still managed to retain control of Rasa Eco Shares. During the night of 10-11 May, NATO bombers dropped dozens of bombs on the Yugoslav troops who had attacked KLA positions around Rasa Eco Shares. At least in two of these instances NATO dropped cluster bombs on Yugoslav army troops. In these attacks, NATO killed eight Yugoslav soldiers and one officer and managed to wound over 40. The KLA seized the opportunity to attack and fought the Yugoslav soldiers out of their positions and forced them back. Chapter 2 Section 4, May, Skirmishes Around Mkhaj During the middle of May, many bloody skirmishes were fought at Mkhaj, which was eventually taken by the Yugoslav army. After the Yugoslavs had inflicted some casualties on the insurgents, the KLA had to retreat from their positions giving the Yugoslavs the chance to take the now undefended position. This development allowed the Yugoslav army to stabilize their position on the battlefield and to hold the attackers outside of their second line of defense. Chapter 2 Section 5, 19-20 May, KLA Attack Near Junik On 19 or 20 May, the KLA attacked a Yugoslav Special Forces position near Junik. The KLA claimed to have managed to kill 14 Yugoslav Special Forces members after bitter fighting, whilst they suffered no losses. One of the killed was Russian citizen Bulak Vitali Glebovich. Documents retrieved from Glebovich's body showed he was an officer within the Russian army, while Moscow confirmed that there was an officer by the same name who had been discharged from the Russian army due to medical conditions with the name that the KLA had provided. The KLA presented this as evidence of Russian involvement in the war and sent a strong letter of protest to the Russian embassy in Tirana, demanding 5,000 firearms with ammunition as ransom for the retrieval of the body. Yugoslavia reported Glebovich was killed while fighting as a volunteer. Chapter 2 Section 6, The 22nd of May, NATO Friendly Fire on Cossair Outpost On the 22nd of May, NATO aircraft mistakenly bombed KLA positions. Some KLA commanders would later say that this was intentional to stop the KLA from making further gains. According to the KLA, seven of their fighters were killed and 27 wounded in the strike. However, after the war, PBS reported 67 fighters died in the raid. Throughout May, NATO conducted air operations against Serbian targets in Kosovo and Serbia, some which included collateral damage death of civilians. Chapter 3 Aftermath. Although the Yugoslav army was unable to reclaim the border outpost at Kosair, the KLA never broke out of this small bridgehead and was ultimately unsuccessful at securing a corridor from Albania through this route. It was thought the KLA was unable to make further gains as they lacked heavy weapons after the Albanian army withdrew its support. This would lead to the Battle of Paystrike in late May, where some thought the KLA was successful, while others thought they were unsuccessful or achieved minimal success. Despite managing to capture two villages near Peck and seizing large stretches of the border area northwest of Prizren, the KLA was not able to gain control of the Peck Prizren Highway and suffered heavy losses. The Kosovo War lasted until 10 June. The Kumanovo Agreement was signed, and the Yugoslav Army, paramilitaries, and police forces had to pull out of Kosovo. The Corps entered Kosovo as a peacekeeping force. The KLA was, 
under the terms of the Kumanovo Treaty, disarmed and disbanded, however many of its members left Kosovo and joined Albanian organizations in the insurgency in the Prasevo Valley, an insurgency in the Republic of Macedonia. Chapter 4, Legacy Sali Sekaj and Agim Ramadani were posthumously decorated with Hero of Kosovo by Ibrahim Rugova on the sixth year anniversary of the battle. In 2017, a boulevard in New Belgrade was named to Heroes of Kosair Boulevard, which was a proposition introduced by the citizens of Belgrade. On the 12th of April 2020, Dragutin Dimsevsky, deputy commander of the 53rd Border Battalion, was given the Order of the White Eagle by Serbian President Aleksandar Vucic for his service at Kosair. The 53rd Border Battalion was the first unit to face off against the KLA in the Battle of Kosair. A Serbian feature film about the battle is set for shooting in late June 2020. On 9 April 2021, on the 22nd anniversary of the beginning of the battle, a memorial plaque dedicated to the Yugoslav army fighters of this battle was unveiled in Nis, along with one boulevard in the same city being named the Kosair Heroes Boulevard. Chapter 5 Sources Bari Maharam Gashi. Kosharja Altari I Lirais, Dimensionat E Lufts, Se Koshares de Format E Sarge. Sheepia Botuis Fake Konica. ISBN 9951061494. Smilianich, Spasoj. A Grisija NATO. Ratno vas do hoplovstvo i protivarjusna od brana u od brani otad spine. ISBN 978-86-912-285-07. Nardoli, Bruce, Perry, Walter L., Perny, Bruce R., Gordon, John IV., McKinn, John G. Disjointed War, Military Operations in Kosovo, 1999. Rand Corporation. ISBN 978-08333231-7. Coercive Diplomacy of NATO in Kosovo. Cambridge Scholars Publishing. 2015. ISBN 978-14438-7668-1. Hockenos, Paul. Homeland Calling, Exile Patriotism and the Balkan Wars. Cornell University Press. ISBN 08014 4158